Well, hi, I'm Ed Orser. I've been a member at Salem ever since coming to Baltimore. Um, my wife and I were in the Peace Corps in Ethiopia uh, and interestingly enough became Lutherans while we were there. There was an international community gathered together uh, a long heritage in Ethiopia of Orthodox Christianity but also a, a Protestant group uh, that meant a lot to us and we came to the Baltimore area I had just taken a job with the very new UMBC. It was just getting started at the time I arrived and it was really a delight to be there uh, and help to get it started. Uh, but we then were looking for a church home and this congregation felt very, very welcoming to us. Uh, I, I think that, you know, almost from the beginning, and, and I think almost everyone who's been talking in this program has said this is a very warm and receptive congregation. It's open to a very wide diversity of people. There's a sense of acceptance. Uh, and to me, that to us, my wife and I, that just felt really right. One of the kind of ironies of my being here was that soon after joining the church, uh, it came time for one of the church's major anniversaries. It had been established in 1849 and they were about to celebrate their 125th anniversary. Uh, and we're looking for someone to write a short history uh, for publication for that event. Uh, I'm a historian by trade, American studies is my field. Uh, but as a newcomer, I felt a bit uh, surprised they would ask me because there's this rich history and many families here who uh, go back generations. But there also are many people who are newcomers to the area. And I think they wanted to capture that sense that it wasn't just a sort of a closed corporation as sometimes is felt in some churches. And that was really true for us. We really felt like there wasn't a distinction between old timers, newcomers, and we were very much apart. But that gave me the opportunity to learn more about the history of this congregation. It got started in 1849 on the edge of what is now Catonsville, what was then, however, just farmland, the early German immigrants coming in, establishing farms. Many of them came from Protestant Lutheran backgrounds, and so they established a Lutheran church, uh, which served them. Interestingly, they grew, and by 1903, they made a really momentous decision. They moved from out in the farm belt uh, around Catonsville into the heart of Catonsville. They became a quote, a downtown church. Uh, and that was a sign that they were really already broadening their membership. They weren't just German by background. They were people of various backgrounds, people moving into the area. Uh, and they sort of had developed this sort of cornerstone uh, here in the middle of, in the middle of growing Catonsville. Um, at that time also, interestingly enough, the church went from its earlier German language church, uh, liturgy to uh, English language. So. There was an important broadening I learned about, which had happened in an earlier period, and I think that kind of broadening has always been part of, uh, of Salem's character and its characteristic. Uh, I think today newcomers feel very welcome. They don't feel they've got to prove themselves. Uh, they are rather quickly uh, enlisted in all kinds of volunteer activities and committee work uh, and service opportunities. Uh, they really feel very much a part. I think another thing that's always been very important to us, uh, certainly when we were looking for a church and as we've stayed in this one, this church, in our experience, has had a wonderful tradition of very able and very caring pastors, very thoughtful pastors in terms of their sermons, which are always a really wonderful sort of challenge to how to live the Christian life. Uh, they're very often pointing toward opportunities we have to serve others in our, in our community, in our nation, in the world. Uh, in recent years, uh, and really for some time, there have been a number of our members who uh, work for, church, for, for uh, Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Immigration Refugee Services, both of which are headquartered in Baltimore. And I think their presence helps to also give this congregation a very strong sense of its worldly mission, uh, as well as its mission in this community, in this country. Uh, always those have been hallmarks of this congregation. As to pastors, I think there's certainly a sense of a strong pastoral care. 
uh, a strong uh, kinship with our pastors. Uh, Pastor Ed Whetstone served for a number of years in our time here, and now in more recent years, Pastor Dave Eisendorf. Uh, more recently, Pastor Sarah Car Garrett Cray. Uh, all of them have been really, I think, very exceptional. We're very fortunate to have had them, uh, and they helped to make one really feel a part of this community. I think when Salem relocated to downtown Catonsville, I say that with quotation marks because it was a growing village, but really not a city by any means. But it was clearly a very important statement, not only that they were leaving their German roots and their farm origins to be more in the center of things, but the building itself is a very substantial stone presence. Uh, it's sort of like, we're here. Uh, and we're, a fel uh, you know, the, the uh, church is a mighty fortress in sense, hopefully not one that keeps, keeps people out, but one of the sort of established presence. But when it was put here, it faces Frederick Avenue. Uh, it's very visible as you drive by. But as you drive by, uh, you wonder, how do you get into the church? Because today, most people do come here by, by driving. And for years, they would enter from the parking lot in the back through a very narrow door, which we kidded. It was almost like the camel trying to go through the, uh, through the gateway into such a small space. Uh, there was a clear recognition that the church needed to upgrade its facilities. Uh, and over the years, uh, the, the so-called back entrance became a really inviting a way to reach the, the other parts of the church, the other parts of the church were knit together. It's certainly a much more functioning uh, facility. And again, it showed a great deal of vision, a great deal of confidence uh, that this church was here to stay and it was expanding uh, for, for sort of new needs. I think one of the things that really struck us a great deal, not only were we were welcome when we came here, and I think people still feel very much that, but it's a sufficiently diverse congregation, diverse in age, diverse in ethnicity, and, and certainly also in race. Uh, it's welcoming across those various social divides, uh, and one can feel very comfortable uh, because it really does uh, serve a, a, a variety of people who, have, who find a place uh, in this congregation.